Hey, welcome to Crooked U. I'm Andy Walton, the brewmaster. Enjoy the beer today. My partner's a bagpiper, and there's a song that he plays often called the U with the Crooked Horn, I think. Um, I was trying to think up names, and I was coming up empty. I didn't have, I had a long list of them, none of them that I really liked, and he said that one, and that totally sounds like an English pub name to me or something. It, it reminded me of the, the crazy pub on uh, American Werewolf in London. It's got, it had the creepy placard hanging out, I forget what it was, but it seemed good, so we rolled with it. This place had been set in here for a while. It looked like a weird house on the hill setting next to a weird basement or something. That's, it was hideous. So we didn't really pay much attention to it. Um, South Bend historically has way underutilized the river. There's lots of space, but nobody does anything with it. So I always thought that was kind of lame. So I had the little, it's on the river, in the back of my head. So we set up another appointment. I think that was the walkthrough where there were like waterfalls coming through the ceiling. It was awesome. Since the building was so trashed, we got it for really, really cheap, but naturally had to had spend a couple bucks on it to get us where it's at now. It's been a Legion Hall or a VFW for like the last hundred years. The bar rail on the bar is from the old, the old bar. I salvaged it and put it back. Lots of good juju on there, you know. I figured I'd put that back in there. It would be good. Um, this is a tin barrel system. Nearly everything is from glacier tanks. Everything is, is straight tin barrel. I don't have any double-sized fermenters or anything like that. So I've got four fermentation vessels behind us. Uh, I have six bright tanks in the cooler um, that we serve from. We actually serve 12 beers usually, so we rock six out of brights and then everything else cakes. That's my whole life, is whispering the yeast and beer fire drills. I use municipal water, so it's not great for brewing because of the additives they put in, chlorine and chloramine. So I strip the water down with a reverse osmosis filter that gets held in the cold liquor tank, and then I rebuild the water profile for every beer. Uh, so I mentioned I, was, I had an IT background. When you, like server farms, the, all the machines look the same, so they generally have some type of naming convention, A, B, C, D, reflective, um, you know trees, whatever. These are Grateful Dead songs. So same deal, A, B, C, D, but Althea, Bertha, Cassie, Dark Star. There, I'm a fan. All my beers are gluten reduced. Um, I use a product called Brewers Clarex. Um, it's an enzyme that gets added um, at the time I pitch the yeast. It uh, cleaves the gluten chain down into small enough pieces that your body doesn't know it's gluten anymore. And ultimately, it's a clarifying agent. I use it to make the beer clear. The byproduct is that it also does the gluten thing. So yeah, that's, that's cool. We've had really good uh, response um, from folks that previously didn't think they, they would ever be able to drink beer again. You know, that's uh, what a drag, right? That's for a beer lover to then not be able to drink beer all of a sudden. It doesn't work. I mean, it's not the cure-all for everybody. Uh, you know, it's not going to be 100%, but for the most part, I'd say six of 10 people um, have had great luck. They're, I I sent multiple people home with $3 just to, to try it because they were scared. They are like, no, it's not even worth it. You don't even know. It was like, that sounds bad. Glasgow Butcher Scotch Ale has been uh, a huge seller. It took bronze at the World Beer Cup this year, which is awesome. There, that was totally unexpected. I mean, I entered, so <laughs> I was hopeful, but you know, that's one of those things I didn't really expect to pull anything. It's in our first year. We weren't even open a year when we got the award. Um, but yeah, that's a great seller. Uh, Turtle Tamer, all the IPAs and double IPAs. Uh, uh, more of a West Coast style IPA. Um, it's, it's bigger, the hops are more punchy, it's pine, kind of a little more dank delicious. Um, Vital IPA is more of a Midwest style IPA where it's not quite so hot punchy. Um, it's all centennial. Wampus Monster, the double IPA, uh, I can't, another one I can't make enough of. It's, they, it gets burned up. Always, it's a big Citra mosaic hop feature. That's, we sell Zen Cafe coffee in here. That's all the all the coffee that we use. When I use coffee in a beer, I try 
geez, uh, Sean's coffee. The product is outstanding. Um, you know, he's a, a local roaster. They're in the same space as a local chocolater, chocolatier. That's he's a chocolate guy. Um, there for Violet Sky chocolate. So I use Hans's chocolate in my beers whenever I can. And uh, no, it's good. I try to, you know, if I can, if I can pull it off with local love, then I will. I don't make much of an attempt to do my beer stuff related to the food. The executive chef Alain is a monster. I mean, I have a hard time ordering sometimes because yeah, I want like five things. Uh, but yeah, everything's really good. The burger's killer, the brisket's killer. This pastrami sandwich, yeah, it's, like I want to have private time with it. It's Hey, taproom travelers. Welcome to the Crooked U. Uh, my name is Alan Helfrick. I'm the executive chef here. My grandfather was a certified master chef and uh, he raised me. And so I grew up in the restaurant industry. My first job was washing dishes at his restaurant. And then from there, it just felt natural. I don't think South Bend was ready for a place like this up until recently. Um, when I started experiencing clients that were like, I go to Chicago every single weekend to get this style of food and this style of service, that's the point where I was like, well, we're, we're really fucking up. We're doing something wrong. I, just from a chef's perspective, like my clients are leaving town to get something that I can provide for them I need to find the right venue and the right owners to make that a reality. And Andy and Sean were those right owners. They were looking for the same thing. Unfortunately, we're the only place in South Bend with an entire vegan menu. Uh, we have two separate menus, one vegan, one not. Um, I don't think anyone should be punished because they don't want to hurt an animal. So that's why I do vegan food, even though I'm not a vegan. And you know, and conflicted about that. I have jambalaya on the menu. I love New Orleans, it's one of my favorite places in the world. Jambalaya is uh, essentially a, a, a slave version of paella, which is Spanish, because the Spanish brought slaves in, they were given the poorer cuts of meat, and they knew the techniques of cooking paella from their sp Spanish owners, essentially. And then they used ingredients available. You know, they didn't have lemons, they had limes. They didn't have this, they had that. And it turned into this, this fusion of food uh, between essentially African, uh, Spanish, and then with the ingredients from the United States. So it's, it's three cultures that got mixed into one dish and it made this beautiful thing. That to me is fascinating. So our brisket smokes for about 12 hours. It's an unbelievably simple process. It's literally smoke and salt and pepper. That's about it. There's a couple other things into it, but what happens in that process is amazing in those 12 hours. So you start with the, the raw brisket, just salt and pepper, put it in the smoker, you close the doors and you don't open them back up for four hours can't because you'll lose the smoke ring off of it. Um, that's when you lock in a lot of that smoke flavor. Um, and then what happens over the next several hours is a molecular breakdown of the fat, turning it from chewy and rough into uh, what I would say is butter. You're in the stall up until 170 degrees. Um, it's called the stall because you feel like it's never going to happen. You're never going to get past 170. After the stall, uh, we wrap it in butcher paper. We take it up to 204 degrees is usually my goal or until done. And then we let it rest and we serve it. It comes with potato salad. We make our own bacon here. So there's bacon in that. We make our own, you know, aioli, our own mustard, and that goes into that. Uh, I also serve it with Brussels sprouts and pork belly some bourbon barrel aged mustard, uh, some bread made locally, and then house made pickles. And that's our brisket plate. I would pair the brisket plate, I would go the porter, 
the bitterness of any of the IPAs would, would kind of wreck some stuff. But if you wanted to do an IPA, I'd go with the double uh, because it's more balanced, it's a little sweeter, and it wouldn't overtake some of the smokier nuances. Pastrami came out of the necessity to preserve food. Uh, there's four steps to pastrami, uh, traditionally. Uh, brine, smoke, boil, steam. Brining, uh, which is a salt water bath essentially, which is what happens to um, pastrami, to the brisket, um, is a product of necessity because when they kill the cow, we needed the meat to last longer than it would actually last. So we put it in water with salt and it preserved it. Um, here we do that uh, for about 14 days. It's in a brine and it's in a brine of uh, pickling spices, garlic, brown sugar, salt. The next step is to smoke, and we smoke it the exact same way we do our brisket with a different spice rub. It's not just salt and pepper. Uh, it's a combination of nine spices. Because we no longer live in the age of no refrigeration, uh, there's a, a fundamental concept that don't ever boil meat, ever. Right, like you don't want boiled chicken, you want it to be seared to get the Maillard reaction, you want it to be oven roasted. Uh, boiling meat strips flavor and makes things chewy. So in looking at a traditional pastrami recipe, um, I came to realize that the, the boil and steam are not only stripping flavor away, but they're unnecessary because we have the technology to, to not need to do those two steps, so I eliminated them. I'm sure there's people who will tell me that I am doing pastrami the wrong way, but I feel like it, it needed observation and, and we're, we're looking at two stages out of four that are completely unnecessary. In my opinion, it's the best pastrami I've ever had, and I've had a lot of pastrami. Uh, beer pairing for the pastrami, I would, oh man. I'd go with the Scotch Ale. That would be a, would be my number one for that one. Yeah. All right, thank you so much for coming in, and I hope to see all of you viewers here in the tap room drinking beer and eating my good food. Thank you so much. Hey, thanks for stopping in. Uh, see you soon. Ha! <laughs> Cheesy enough? Yes. Perfect. Yeah, perfect. You are done, sir. So it's just nice to get out into the community, talk to people. Um, you know, just socialize with local farmers and just people in the community in general. Tell me, when are you getting out of here? Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, you can click down below where there's some more episodes for you to watch. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on episodes that you do watch. We hope to see you next time.